$24,500 on the very first house they flipped and wholesaled without using their cash or credit. How did these Flipman students do it? Stand by, let's get it. Hello guys, this is Ty A.K., the Flip Man, and today, 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 I have this wonderful couple out of North Carolina that uh, sent me a picture of a check of their first deal. Uh, they are students, and uh, was that on Wednesday? Yeah, that was Wednesday, because it was the day before the Flipping Art, so that was Wednesday. And I was, I was expecting it, but I actually had forgot about it. So this got an ironic text of that whopping uh, amount of money. You know, it just it just made my day. Within the evening time, just made my day. So enough of me yapping here, uh, guys. How, how are you? How, how are you all doing? We're doing great. Doing great. I have uh, Angie and Dale here. They're out, of, as I said, North Carolina. And uh, they have a uh, very interesting story that I, I think will help a lot of people because it wasn't easy for them. Um, and, it, and, and it just didn't happen immediately. I, I actually like those better because that's real life. And none of the seminar, seminar fluff game or whatever. You know, they had a real experience of getting their first deal. But I think they will agree it was more than worth it. The number one, that it, to see that is real. But on top of that, the amount of money that they made, which will change, send them in the orbit, I think, is for changing their financial situation. So um, the way I like to always start these off is just basically to give, uh, give everyone a, a, an idea of, number one, uh, who you all are and um, your backstory before you even got involved, involved into real estate, if you don't mind sharing. You already know, I gotta do some house cleaning. Dealator.com is where you can make this business a lot easier for yourself if you use this tool. What Dealator will do for you, AKA PropStream, is allow you to start with the basics, which is finding owners and determining what the ARV or the value of a property is. Help you build a cash buyers list. Find the phone numbers and or email addresses for sellers and buyers. And one of the more recent videos that I put out on how you can use it to target apartment building and multifamily owners all over the country. Just as a bonus to this particular video, if you stick around to the end of this interview, I'm going to share with you for free some training on wholesaling apartment buildings and what to look for and how you could possibly work with me on closing deals, even if you're not a student. If you like podcasts, get over to flipmanpodcast.com to access most of my videos on iHeartRadio, iTunes, and even for Android devices. If you have questions about real estate investing, mainly wholesaling, you should join us every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern for my live flippinars with my co-host live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. That's every Thursday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on those platforms. If you didn't know, I give away the one-page contract that I've been using since 2003 to wholesale houses for free. If you want to download a free copy, simply get over to my website, flipman.net. While you're there, you can take advantage of my ebook on how to flip three to five houses per month. Also, if you need step-by-step -step courses and coaching directly from me, you can take advantage of those also through my site at flipman.net. If you're having trouble reaching any of my products or services, you can always call or text me and I'll be happy to assist. If you're gonna use direct mail as a form of marketing to get your phone ringing with sellers, even buyers, then mailtoflip.com 
is your answer. This is where you can actually send out mailers to property owners with a picture of their actual property. You don't think that'll get their attention and they pick up the phone and call you, this will allow you to stand out from your competition that's normally sending out yellow letters and or postcards. So mailtoflip.com if you want to stand out from your competition. So again, stick around to the end of this particular interview to get the free bonus training on how to wholesale apartments. Now back to the interview. Well, we were both uh, professional people, got laid off and uh, didn't know what direction we were going in. Started looking at real estate deals here and there. Nothing panned out. We've actually been researching for about three years. We were sinking fast and um, I happened to run across Flipman here on YouTube. And at that time there were about 150 videos there and I literally started watching every single one of them. And I would spend hours looking at them and going over them and going back to them and they were great. So um, I contacted him and we joined his uh, coaching plan and best move we ever made. And then we went to Alabama and actually met him and followed him around, got to know the real person and it's just been great ever since. And um, we follow every single step that he gives and we never come off of that. I will tell you, if you, you don't follow the steps, you might as well go somewhere else because <laughs> he does what he's doing. <laughs> so we're extremely happy. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, as you said, you initially um, uh, you thought about getting into real estate after your uh, your career went in a different direction from what you were used to. Um, and um, as you said, I, I so I was the first exposure that you had as far as wholesaling, because obviously you knew about real estate, but um, I was the uh, first exposure as far as wholesaling is what you're saying? Exactly. Okay. All right. Um, well, I think you all signed up. Uh, of course, the date of this video is in July of 2018. I think you all signed up uh, back in December of 2017, right? Correct. We did. Okay. All right. And um, you all went through the information. When when did you all? When do you all think you all actually first took action as far as trying to get your phone to ring with uh, with motivated sellers or, or vice versa, ringing it? Uh, actively reaching out to motivated sellers. When, when do you think that occurred? I think it, we set up our uh, business number in uh, late May, early June, and then we proceeded on to, with the procurement of our bandit signs and begin putting those out. Okay, so, so even though you all signed up for the course, you really didn't take action in a sense until until May last June, I guess May May, yeah, May early June. That's right. We had some life events that were going on with a sickness in the family, and then ultimately a death in the family, and it was just too much going on to try to concentrate on this. And and then we jumped right in it in May after we met with you. We came back and we went gung ho, and that's what we've been doing ever since. Okay, so in reality, the clock really didn't start for you all until. Um, until late May or whatever. So you actually did do a deal quicker than what I thought. Okay. So, um, so you bought bandit signs. Well, you got your the number to, um, uh, just for your bandit signs as far as your, your, that type of marketing or advertising. And, uh, how many, uh, bandit signs did you initially order? 500. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. And I'm assuming Dale was the, um, uh, what was the coordinator on getting those getting those out? How many <laughs> did you it. how many did you initially put out, Dale? I think we put out twenty five. Twenty five. Oh wow, okay. that, that's it. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, yep. and so uh, not to get up ahead of ourselves, but the the deal that you you the first deal it came from those initial twenty five. Yes, sir. From the first one we put out, it was All actually right. the first so, bandit sign. Okay, so when, as far as where you placed those signs, what was your, I guess, technique, technique or method as far as where you were going to place those initial 25 signs? We tried to pick the busiest intersections uh, for people going to and from work 
in different locations around town. Okay. Uh, what would you say the uh, population, that general population of where you all are located um, uh, is, you know, just a, a greater area, I guess you'd say, not maybe just the one city, but what would be the, uh, the population, do you think? Uh, the area we live in is stated as a research triangle park. It's Raleigh, Durham, and Chapel Hill. Okay, that, that's, that's large. That's large. Yeah, it's well over a million people. Yeah, that, that's large. I'm, I'm familiar with that. Oh, okay, so um, as far as the uh, the type, those initial 25, which I always say you need more than that, but you all prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, those initial uh, 25 that you put out, what type of neighborhood was that? Was it a, a D, a C, a B? Well, what type of neighborhood or combination of those? Because it's not that, you know, 25 is not a lot in the scheme of things for abandoned signs. Mm. I would say they were probably like B neighborhoods. Okay. All but right. actually, actually, the one that we got the call from was actually in a business area. Okay. Um, like I said, it was a high traffic area, and, and the, the lady that contacted us actually saw it on her way home from work. Okay, so she, she identified, whenever the lady called you, she identified where she saw the actual sign. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and get into that initial. Well, let me ask you this. How many, um, number one, how many calls did that, that 25 initial signs generate? Number two, uh, did you put out more beyond that, beyond those 25? I, I would assume you still don't have 475 signs in your garage somewhere, right? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I mean, and we're still. Hey, you guys are gonna have these people thinking uh, that you can put out twenty five signs at twenty five no, twenty four thousand no, no. five hundred dollars no, later. No, uh, but, uh, but, but it's like that. Now I only I only put out fifty initially when I started. Now my check was a tenth of what you all check was. It was twenty five hundred dollars and not nearly twenty five thousand or whatever. But uh, still the same result, a deal was closed. And um, so how many calls did that generate? Did it only generate that one particular call or, or did it generate more? No, we had numerous calls. Um, wow, okay, that's oh, man, you did a great did, job. We yeah. had numerous calls and we're still getting calls from them and we're still getting calls from that same first sign. <clears throat> Something about that first sign's really working. That's what people are seeing the most. So the majority, so the majority of those 25 are still up? Yes, I think only what three of them are down. Three are down. Three are down. We, <laughs> we check them every week. So. <laughs> hey, this is funny. All right, so uh, let's get into that call to turn it to an actual check. Since you're still getting calls from that initial twenty-five. Hey, hey, what what if you all had two hundred and fifty signs out? What do you think would happen? <laughs> Oh, man. Well, look, we're we're hitting it this afternoon too. Uh, all right, all right, all right. So yeah, that's our goal today. See, normally, normally when people do their first deal, they have to re up on the marketing or whatever. But you all have ninety percent of your signs still in you know still in storage or whatever. So that's a good thing. So let's get into that first initial call that you received and um and uh, how that went about because I know it wasn't easy. You know, we went back and forth on different things with it and it gets interested on how it played out. But uh, what, what was the, what was the situation when the uh, initial call came through? Um, we got the call. The lady was very desperate when she called and um, she had lost her job the day before her car was repossessed during the time she was supposed to meet us. So she had to borrow a vehicle, but she inherited this house from her deceased parent and she was just desperate for money. We went in and looked at the house. She was renting it out, and um, we went in and looked at the house that needed some work. Not an awful lot at that time that we thought, and the guy came and did, that looked at it with us as we showed it later, found some things that needed to be done. Um, I posted an ad on Craigslist in three major cities around us. Well, well and, before you get ahead of yourself, so uh, let's, let's get to um, – uh, the price that she gave you, uh, taking in consideration the repair cost and then putting it on the contract or whatever. So what was the initial price that she gave you and what did you determine the ARV to be? 
she initially wanted tax value, of course. <clears throat> Excuse me. And of course, we told her what we buy and resell. So we ended up that she wanted seventy-five thousand. As days went by, we found out there was not one mortgage; there were two. So we ended up making her an offer for sixty-five thousand, of which she owed sixty-one on. So the the combined mortgages uh, total sixty-one thousand. Correct. Okay. All right. So we made the offer for sixty-five. Okay. I posted it on Craigslist. So so, but before you go into first, so you you went ahead and put it on the contract. Did you put the actual contract in her hand, or did you email it to her? How how did that how did that uh, course? We met her in person the next day after we looked at the house. Okay. That's so what she, she signed the uh, contract for sixty five thousand. How much earnest money? A hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. Okay. All right. Okay, so now you have contract in hand, and uh, you posted on Craigslist. And so, what? So, what? What did you, what happened there? We put it in three major cities, and we had over two hundred hits in about six hours on it of emails, and uh, everybody wanted it. I actually came up with an email, told everything about the house without the address, told what the tax value was, what the repair value was going to be, roughly, and um, what the ARV was going to be, and what my asking price was. And I started out with 92,000 and is what I was asking. Yeah, I remember I remember you contacted <laughs> me about uh, what should the, the Craigslist ad say. And I think I sent over a sample of what I did, but when you read yours, I said, oh, you need to write back. <laughs> <laughs> it was so detailed and informative to it. It just made it a no brainer. That's probably why the reason you got the um, I wish I wish you had it in front of you. You could read it out. Um, uh, that that would probably help a lot of people. I tell you what. Um, okay, how, how did your how did your ad start? We stopped this uh, video, y'all, to start it back because I wanted to get this ad in. But go okay. ahead. How how did the ad read, Angie? Um, picture of the house, blacked out the address, and I said this is an investment property. In capital letters, looking for a cash buyer to close ASAP. A charming three bedroom, one and a half bath, private home, and it's near RTP and NCCU. Currently rented at income of $900, 1,175 square feet. Home is spacious on the inside, looks larger than 1,175. Has full unfinished basement with security door and window. Large lot, large fence backyard, very nice quiet neighborhood, paved drive. Roof and HVAC in excellent working condition and replacement windows. Tax value 101, ARV 140 to 145, repair 7,000. Please call my number between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. We do not need to list with a realtor. We are not renting or renting with option to purchase because I knew we were going to get a lot of that. Oh, we, wow. Yeah, yeah, that's detail there. <laughs> That's, yeah, and uh, everybody's been making comments about wow, there's not a whole lot of questions to ask other than are the people on the lease. <laughs> so, so I, I wanted her to read that out to you guys because you're always asking what should you Craigslist ad, but I gave her the look, the little piss and ad that I do. <laughs> and she, <laughs> and she showed, she know, she put it on ster on steroids. So, uh, so there you go. So you can play this back as many times you want to fill in the blanks. Or whatever, but uh, Dale, while she was getting the ad, I, I paused the video. Uh, while while uh, uh, Angie was getting the uh, ad, uh, Dale told me that. Uh, what what did you say about the lady on this particular uh, call here? What what happened? That afternoon, when she was on her way home from work, she saw a, a different bandit sign from a different wholesaler and called that number first, and no one answered. So the next intersection, she sees our bandit sign. And contacted us and we answered right away so we got the deal so we got the deal and i always stress to people they'll say well i see bandit signs everywhere in my area that is a beautiful thing because they are working which means you can do the same thing they'll call your number and call someone else you'll get the deal by just answering the phone or be the first one to it you know it's just it's just that simple, you know, not, not, you're going to lose some, obviously it's, that's competition, you know, but that's a good thing. If you see bandit signs in the area, that means you can do the same thing. Those guys are not wasting their time or money unless they are working. All right. So Ironically, she had, uh, we had a sign at the first intersection 
and it was above the one that she called, uh, and they were both signs that looked just about identical of color, and she um, she was starting at the bottom working up, and that was where her eyes went, and ours was above it, so she called that first one, and by the way, she was already really upset because she had just lost her job and was on the way home. Oh, that wow. Was, she lost her job. She got fired that day. So, um, as it turns out, um, the next intersection, boom, we were the only sign there, and she called it, and we answered. Great, great, great. Okay, so we ran that. that <laughs> ad. So that's is that, that's the only thing that you did as far as my, that's the only thing you really needed to do with that type of response that you received. Um, but that's the type of deal that you look for. The, the ARV was one oh well, was one forty ish, and you got it in the contract for sixty five. Uh, what did you all estimate the repairs to be? About seven thousand at that About time. Seven thousand. All right, we'll just say ten, just for the sake of easy numbers here. And then you put it out there at ninety two. Okay, so uh, you started receiving calls on it. So let's 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 get to how you went about uh, weeding out the tire kickers. And uh, until you got to an actual buyer, because I know that was a a, a buyer that a a, a scene that he's going to move forward, but you ended up going with someone different, differently on it. So the first the first gentleman who called us um, offered full price right off the bat. Um, told me it was a, he knew it was going to be a good deal. Could he get the address? I gave it to him while we were on the phone. He Googled it, looked it up, looked at the tax value, and he's like, "I want a contract." We started talking about the contract and this and that. But then he wanted me to email him a contract, and I told him I thought he needed to at least see the house. As we talked, I found out the man was in Israel, so he was international. So um, we went back and forth with him. That's when I contacted you, and um, he had somebody locally here to actually look at the house, to inspect it. We thought we were still going, but then he wanted to kind of make a lot of changes, and we didn't go that route. And... Um, as it turns out, someone else picked it up and made us an offer on it. I declined the first offer. And what, what, was, the first, what was the first offer? <clears throat> I, um, I had it listed for 92. He offered 87. And I said 89.5. He said, I'll take it. He never even batted his eye, nothing. I'll take it. Okay. Then, so uh, he's also I, a flipper. He, he, he flips houses majorly around here. Okay, so so what happened, because it had a tenant in it, and this is good for a lot of people, but I know what happened with that situation, uh, because the owner, if I remember correctly, didn't want the tenant to know that it was a possibility that they were going to sell it. Why? Uh, that she was interested in selling it. So I know the guy wanted to, uh, to view the house, so how did that go? We had to call the owner, and I, we, Dale told her, if we're going to go through with this deal, you're going to have to let us in the house. We're going to be reselling it. We need to do some work to it, and we need to get somebody else in it, or it can't be a deal. And she was desperate for money. She knew we were trying to close. We just signed a contract on the 28th. This was like the 4th or the 5th of July by then. And we, no, the 3rd, excuse me, on the 3rd. And the guy went and looked at it on the 3rd with us. We got back in. The tenant talked to us and told us some things going on with it, so we looked at it further. Um, there was a lot of things because people lived in the home. We couldn't see that first day. We kind of rushed through. Well, yeah, let, let's go to that through that story right <laughs> there because you follow you follow my instructions and you videoed the property, but you say, Ty, we, we can't we can't put this video out because yeah, the owner and the uh, tenant uh, were very uh, confrontational. And there was a lot of arguing and bickering going back and forth, and it got into our video, so we couldn't post it. A lot of nasty words. <laughs> it was a, a lot of vulgar language being used, so we couldn't post that video. So I needed to get back in there for that, and I told her, I said, I have to get in there. And I told her she had to stay outside. <laughs> hey, you were good and firm with it. okay. Yeah, we told her, if you want any money, you have to do it. So we oh, gave yeah. her a July hey, 1st. You know what they call that? A motivated seller. You control them. They don't control you. In most cases, not always, but in most cases, you're not going to get the price that that's going to work for you in a wholesale transaction unless the seller's just about willing to do everything you say. You know, so you know, obviously it's negotiations, whatever, but she was motivated to sell and it proved out. 
but the way you were able to get her to back down versus how she acted initially. Um, so, so you got your, so I'm assuming you got your buyer in so he could walk through it and just confirm what he thought, what he already thought. And so, uh, how, how did the contract pro uh, process go uh, with your buyer? He, um, after he and Dale really inspected the house because some things were moved around so we could see better because the house had a full basement and there'd been some water damage down there that we had not been able to see before. Come to find out there were some major foundation problems. Turns out to be around what fifteen to fifteen thousand repair. Yeah, the, the repair went from seven to about fifteen. Um, as it turns out, the gentleman who bought the house is also a big flipper in repairing and reselling, fixing them up. But he really goes that extra mile and, and does a lot. So that unfinished basement is now going to be living space. So he's really going to add a lot to it. And he's putting the house back on the market. He's allowing the people to stay there for six months. He's not kicking them out right now. And he's going to be working on the basement as they're there. And um, he tried to get me to come off my price some more. And I said, no, this is it. I know what the value of the house is even after you repair it. And um, he thought about it about a nanosecond. Seriously, that's what he told me. And he said, okay, you got a deal. Give me the contract. I said, if you don't want it, that's fine. I got four others. I really did. I had four people seriously waiting to hear from me that day, wanting to buy the house as is right then. Okay, that's what it's all about. Hey, were, were buyers I, hard I, to find? I, no. I said, were buyers hard to find? It's not no, that's what I was going to tell you. I was worried about how are we going to find buyers? Who's gonna, where do you get your buyers list? Never be afraid of that. I'm telling you, that ad I put on Craigslist generated 200 plus calls and emails. And we picked up about 15 or 16 names and phone numbers to call people later. That's it. For the first <laughs> time. Hey, that, that was a <laughs> perfect deal. They won't always go like that. But no, that was a perfect deal because you negotiated a great price. You had a great deal. It is not difficult to find buyers if you have a great deal, people contact me all the time. Will you, will you pardon on me to, to find a buyer on this deal? And I'm not going to turn down any money, but I always tell them you won't really, you won't need me if it's a great deal. Now, if you don't know what you're doing, okay, I get it. You know, you want to bring me in. That's different. But it, it, uh, wanting me to, as some of them call me asking, will I even buy it? I say, <laughs> if it's a great deal, you, you won't need me. You, you just want. And I uh, just, you all negotiated a great deal. You knew your numbers. And uh, number one, you marketed it uh, correctly just by only putting it on Craigslist. There's some other things you could have done, but it wasn't needed, you know, because of the response that you received. So so, uh, so now we got the contract in place. Did you, oh, oh, let me go back to that. Uh, with the buyer, uh, that he used uh, your contract or he had his own contract he wanted to use? He used mine because I wouldn't let him use his. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Uh, he didn't use his because he's bought over 300 pieces of property. Hey. Um, he said, let me give you my contract. I said, no, here's the deal. It's my property, my contract, my contract at the end. So this is how we do it. Um, you can choose the attorney. I do everything else. It's either my way or we go somewhere else. <laughs> so, he did hey, tell remind, me, I got a very hard bargain. Guys. <laughs> As I told him, he was telling me how nice I was, and I said, I, I really can be nice, but I'm your friend. But when it's a business deal, there's a line. There's a line. I'm your friend here, and I'm business over here. When I'm in business mode, I'm not your friend. I don't care if it's him, my husband. I, I'm not your friend then. Uh, it's all I'm, right. I'm geared, I'm focused. I have tunnel vision then. <laughs> that's all I'm for. Oh man, that's great. Okay, so uh, we got the contracts in place, and uh, I'm assuming he chose his own attorney. I think uh, North Carolina is an attorney state, if I'm not uh, mistaken. It is. It is. And uh, so, um, so you set up the. Uh, how did you go about setting up the clothing? You used his people. I'm we used his people, and let me also say, his attorney right off the bat got in there and said. Uh, I really need to tweak your contract. I'd like to really do some things. I'll only charge you about $800. And I said, did I ask for your help? And I think he just looked at me like um, I overstepped. <laughs> but I just told him I didn't need anything tweaked. It worked. 
Um, I was happy with what I had. Could we close the deal? I was ready to go. The closing was very long and tedious. What happened, it, the, it wasn't an estate. So for future use, someone needs to know. Find out if the house is in an estate, which I knew it was, but there were two co-executors and we did not know that at the time. So both had to sign at the closing. And we, the lady inherited the house, but her sister was co-executor as well. And she didn't own the house, but because she's co-executor, and then she didn't want her to sell the house. So it became a war between the two sisters the day of closing. I mean, the closing so was she, at 11, and we didn't close until 446 that day. So she had to, uh, so the sister was not aware that it was even being sold until that day? No. So, so she had to be convinced Number one, to sell it. Number two, to sell it at the price that the sister, the other sister had agreed upon. So how, how, how did she convince her to do that? We sat at the table for over an hour for the attorney trying to convince her she did not own the house. She was nothing but co-executor. Um, and the sister that did inherit the house could get a court order and go over her head. It would take time, but she could do that. And she could be asked to make... Um, payments or not payments, but she could be asked to reimburse for legal fees for that. And I think it just became a real twisted thing there. And I'm like, are we going to close or not? My buyer was sitting there like, I want to go talk to the tenants now because it was a third party handling a, a management, handling the property. It was not handling it really well. And he wanted to go fire them that afternoon before five. So it was, it was a really big deal that day, but uh, closing was 11. We walked out with our money, and the guy said, I'll wire you money. I said, no, you don't understand. I need a check. And he said, well, no, we can wire you money. You'll have it in three or four days. I said, did you not understand what I said? I want a paper check today. And he said, well, we have to get the deed recorded. I said, electronically in Durham and North Carolina, we can do it electronically. And he said, well, it takes a little time. I said, well, then get your fingers busy because we need to get our money today. He said, why do you need a check? I said, because I want to show it to my mentor. And he said, what about your mentor? I said, I need a paper check and I need it today. And I'm not leaving this office until I get it. Where did I sit? She sat in the office. Until I got my check. <laughs> and at 446, when I called you, I had my check. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what's happening. I Man, walked out wow. of the building and called you first. I, was, I mean, I was about to jump over the moons. I was so happy. I, I'm, I'm really happy for you guys because I, I, I knew what you were you were facing financially, what you had to went through over the last few years, and uh, this just just an opportunity just to be able to do for yourself. You don't have to answer or let your careers affect you know your livelihood and people you care about. You know you can manage all all that all of that yourself by just taking some very old knowledge and putting it into action. Put it out to 25 bandit signs and just let 25 grand roll in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for each one of those bandit signs was worth a thousand. <laughs> hey, so, uh, man, that, that's an amazing story. Some of those details I was not aware of, and I, I like to keep it that way because I want everything to be genuine when we do these. But, um, um, so what's next for you guys? Uh, I know you got 475 bandit signs still in storage at home. So, uh, so what? What's next? That's what's next with us. Well, we uh, we also we purchased the list of the addresses in uh, two or three of the zip codes around here. I now have. Uh, we're going to be doing the the yellow postcards. Um, I'm weeding through those now because some of those homes are not. It's not an updated list as we would like. Some of those homes are already sold, but we're going through them and. Um, I'm going to be doing 200 of the postcards. That's my goal to get that done this week. And we're also this afternoon, we're going to be putting out another 25 signs. And uh, we kind of, we've we already scouted out where we want to go. That's what we did last night. And um, everywhere we go, we take pen and pad, take our cell phones, take pictures of properties, um, get back home, look for them, see where they're at, see what's going on with them. Uh, last night in less than an hour, we found four. Uh, our daughter uh, took her son swimming yesterday afternoon and on the way home. She's like, oh, she calls me up. Hey, mom, I found two houses. Here's the addresses. They're both empty and they really need you. <laughs> you know, 
So I'm already on those two this morning. So that's what we've been doing. So there were six homes just since last night. Where anything will pan out, we don't know yet. You don't know till you try. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, man, that, that's an amazing story, guys. And um, I, I think uh, it, it'll help a lot of people understand, um, you know, it takes action, you know. and um, that, It takes uh, action. It takes faith in yourself. And you have to uh, – I was very scared. We were both. We were – Gail was – I even came to you and I said, he, the only thing he's un, unsteady on is – what is he supposed to say when somebody answers? And I said, we buy houses. <laughs> you know? And so that first call that came in, it was, we buy houses. And, you know, I think the first call we ever got was like a junk call anyway. And it was just, it went from there. And after that first conversation, I can tell you people, it really works. You, you feel at ease. And if it could go wrong in this closing, it did. But I promise you, 15 hours of work, it was worth all that. It was worth, I'd do it all again. Because we have about 15 hours really tied up in this of really working and doing anything. So wow. it, you can't beat that. No, you can't beat that. You can't, you can't so, even I, don't, I don't know of anything else we can do. But $24,500, 15 hours of work, 20 at the max, and it be legitimate, be happy, and be able to pay it forward. But that's what it's all about. Oh yeah, that that's what you're doing right now, and I I really appreciate it, God. I really really appreciate it. Um, you, with no hesitation, you all want to do it. A lot of people don't. But that's fine, also. But you know, you want to share your story, and I know you know this will be watched a lot over the next few hours. Whenever I cut it up and, and throw it on YouTube and whatever, but over the next years as long as my channel exists i'm sure it's going to be able to help a lot of people and um you know i, I know the sky's the limit for you guys especially with those the, the work the, the work ethic and uh the negotiating skills and the craigslist ads <laughs> I'm sure you, I'll see more I'm, of those texts we would watch your videos and your youtube and i would just sit here and think oh gosh three thousand or five thousand would just you know because we were sinking so fast and i'm just thinking a three thousand or five thousand dollar job would just really do so much for us, and it, it just turned out to be so much better. But you, you do, you have to have faith. You got to believe in it. But the the biggest thing is, you got to trust your coach and your mentor what you're learning, because that was where Dale and I did all our research before. And as I told you, I'm not saying names, but we really had actually signed up with someone else about three years ago that wanted $22,000 of our money, and we were about to take every dollar we had to try to make it. And I literally was just praying about it, trying to figure out, is this the right thing? Something kept saying, no, no, no. And as Dale says, when I have that gut feeling, don't do it. And I called him and told him, we just can't do this. I, I just don't feel good about it. And um, they told me it's going to be the worst mistake of my life that I was I was going to stay broke. Oh, they said that's, that. that's what they told me. I was going to stay broke. So uh, wow. Yep. And so uh, they they asked me if I knew uh, what job meant, and I said, "Excuse me." And he said, it "Means just over broke, and that's the way you're going to stay." So, um, but anyway, here we are. There they are with lawsuits against them for misrepresentation, and here we are with you. Best money we ever spent. I would do it all over again. But it, it's been your personality. It's been your, your drive to help and pay it forward. It's been your knowledge that you've done all this background stuff. And what people don't realize is everything that you're doing in the background that helps us. Uh, whether it's help us to get the postcards done, where we go, where we get our bandit signs, how we put them out, what we should do next. That's why I said, follow through. Anybody who does this, follow through what you said. If we don't, we just don't need to do it with you. But you've, you've got it together enough. It is a simple plan to follow. Is it easy every day? Absolutely not. Is it effortless? No. You've got to put the effort into it. But you got to believe in yourself. So it, it's a team. It's with you and us, too. And that's what makes it work. Oh, yeah. I, I really appreciate the kind words. <laughs> hey, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just a tool. 
Um, and, you know, I got the exposure that I put out there on, you know, the time frame, but I'm just a tool, but you all, you all executed it uh, at its finest. Yeah, but a mechanic can't, he can't build his motor without tools. So we can't do it without you. Uh, we would have never been where we are without you. Uh, we're very grateful. And very grateful. Uh, there's no way to tell you. <laughs> and and really we met a new friend. We met a new friend. And we, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's, that's just going to happen naturally. That's just going to happen naturally. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, um, and, 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 and guys, yeah, I, you really don't know. I, I'm telling you, when I see that, I am. When you send me that text or that check, which it'll it'll probably appear on this on this particular video, I'll white out all the information that you can only see. But um, when you send me that check for uh, twenty four thousand five hundred big ones, I'm like, wow. The only thing could have been better if my name was on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you, we're coming down there, and I'm you're gonna reap the benefits because we're coming back to the fish market. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, you gave him a free plug. <laughs> talked about it since we left there. He wants to come back down there, but we'd like to come back down there. Like I said, future adventures of working with you, they're going to be great. They're oh, yeah. going to be great. Yeah. One thing about us, we might be older, but we're not lazy folks, and we'll do anything to make a dollar. If it's legal, we'll do it. So. Oh yeah, the, the, the South Side Fish Market because there's two others that are not related. They're related, but they're not related. We went to the South Side Fish Market. You know, those of you all that are uh, familiar with uh, with uh, Birmingham, it's down by UAB on the South Side of town, or whatever. But uh, but yeah, it was great. You guys came down. I was able to help you. So um, again, guys, um, uh, really appreciate this time that you shared with us, and uh, I know this is going to help a lot of people. Um, the way your story went because it wasn't easy. You had some challenges that just like like I tell people a lot of times they call me and they say, um, "Hey, uh, you know, can you do this for me?" And I, and I hope people don't ever think I'm being rude or think I'm I'm all of that. They just want me to do the stuff for them for free. And like you all signed up, and but life got in the way of you all doing anything. You, you see what I'm saying? You had a, a family situation where someone was ill, and you say they eventually passed on, but you couldn't do it. So if I were to spend all this time with someone and I hadn't been compensated, you know, you can't control some of those things. That's right. And that, that, that's why. And, and then it, at the end of the day, that investment that you made, right, right, well, and it, it, that's just the initial deal. It, it'll, uh, who knows what it's going to end up being before it's all said and, said and done. But, but again, um, I really appreciate you guys sharing this with everyone even myself, because I learned some things about the deal and more about you all to make sure you're even greater than what you, I thought you were before, which was just wonderful. And um, so, uh, again, I appreciate everything. And um, is Dale, Dale out on us, or? He just stepped out of get my okay. grandson. Well, yeah, we can go. But, yeah, uh, I really appreciate it, uh, Angie. And uh, Dale knows it also. And, um, um, anything else you want to share before I close this out? I do want to tell you that when uh, we came down to visit you um, and we were riding around with you those three days, two days, I took 44 pages of notes of just different things that I would see you do. Uh, it wasn't anything you were saying, write this down or do this. Or do. It was just in general conversation. I was taking notes um, on where to go. Um, and I can't remember the guy's name that rode with us. It was so friendly. I can't remember his name. Clarence. 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 I, I just loved that little kid. And I wish I had 10 Clarences here. So um, I liked, you know, what he was doing. And, and we got to know him and talk to him a little bit about his history, too. And it was really, um, it, was, it was very educational. It wasn't just to meet you and shadow you. It was really to learn as well as everything else we did and we learned some we talked about it the whole 10 hours home driving home that's all we talked about was did you hear him say this hey did you remember him saying so and so hey well, you know when we were talking about such and such we need to implement that i mean we talked about it all the way home we were so pumped up everybody needs that everybody needs it so if they get a chance to meet with you that's what they need to do because that's what really got us pumped up the most it really did. Just sitting there talking to you and 
we could not get over the knowledge that you've shared with us, but how kind your heart is and your personality. It, it, you, there's no way to tell the world you're such a real person. You're so easygoing. You're so laid back, and you're but yet you're just your brain is just full of information just spilling out to us. I mean, it's it's unreal. There's no way to tell anybody. Um, and you you're just so open about sharing everything with us. Everybody's not that way. And for that, we're forever grateful. And we're here for life with you. So you can't go anywhere. <laughs> well, I really appreciate those comments, guys. And um, again, uh, your time has been valuable. I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people. Um, and um, I guess uh, we just ended up, as I always say, we'll, we'll see everyone on the flip side. That's it. That's it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you. Well, if you stuck around for this additional training and you use it, you'll thank me later because I'm going to show you how you can use dealyourlater.com, aka PropStream, and how to use it to locate multifamily property owners, apartment building owners, and possibly put a deal together. Now, in order to do that, a couple of things you must know. So this information is important, whether you come back to me for additional training and or if you just want to pass a deal along to me and we partner on it. But I'm only going to be interested in partnering on a deal if you have the necessary information. Now, if you reach out to me about questions, I'm, I'm normally not going to answer them because it can get too detailed. The information that I'm going to provide now is going to be the information that you will need from each owner or broker or the broker's owner when trying to target these particular types of deals. The first thing you must know, and I put out a recent video using Dealulator, aka PropStream, to find these owners. There'll be a link in the comments section of this particular video, how to access that particular video and how to use it. So I'm gonna assume you know how to do that. Now, whenever you're reaching out to sellers or owners of these particular properties, whether it's by phone or direct mail and they call you back, some things that you must collect in order for you to even analyze the property or to submit it to me where we can actually partner on the property. So one of the first things you will want to know is how many units. With those units, you'll want to know how many units are vacant or occupied. They call it vacancy rate or occupancy rate. Basically the same thing, just the reverse of each other. So just as an example, there may be a property with 60 units and 40 of them are rented. So that means 20 vacancies. The next thing you'll want to know is the unit mix. And what the unit mix simply means, and that can also be determined through the rent rolls, which, I, which I'll get into that in a second. The unit mix means how many one bedrooms, how many two bedrooms, I mean three bedrooms, and then obviously the number of baths with each unit. That's the unit mix. The information that you will also want to collect are rent rolls. Rent rolls, R-E-N-T, R-O-L-L-S. And that's basically information or documentation showing who's renting, which unit, how much they are paying each month, are they month to month, the term of the lease, is a deposit and that amount being held, and or whether a unit is vacant or occupied. From that 60 unit example that I just gave, then if you have 40 units occupied, then that would be 40 different tenant names with the amount of rent that they're paying, the number of bedrooms and baths in that particular unit, is a deposit being held or a month to month, the term of the lease, and so on. So the other 20 on that rent roll lease, which would be a current rent roll for that particular month or period that they send to you, there will be 20 vacancies. You also would want to collect a trailing 12, or they call it a T12, meaning basically the, the numbers as far as gross rents and actual expenses over the last 12 months. The next thing you would want to get that I'd like to have is the last two years of profit and loss statements, which is similar to the trailing 12, but this will actually be year 2017, year 2016 profit and loss statements. And that's basically the income coming in and the expenses to come up with actual history of the property. Now, sometimes there may be a recent owner or it may be a mom and pop situation and that information may not be collectible 
or if they do provide it to you, it may be all handwritten. Now that gets into a whole nother thing and then that actually should help your negotiations because it should at least look like they're keeping great records, whether they're not accurate or not. But if it's all handwritten, the information may be accurate, but I use it as a negotiating tool that you didn't keep good records. Now, obviously, whenever you're negotiating, you either take your price or they don't. But you're going to run into some mom and pop situations the way that they kept their records. Obviously, you'll need a price. Now, sometimes they won't give you a price because you are reaching out to them and they want you to make an offer. But ideally, you want to try to pull a price out of them. But if not, an offer can be made based on the information that's collected. Now, sometimes they won't provide this information to you. They won't provide any of it outside of the number of units, um, maybe how many are rented, and they may not give you any more information outside of that. It's going to be very difficult to put an offer together if they don't provide most of that information that I just went over. Now, assuming that you do collect most of this information, now you can determine a net operating income or short for NOI. All right, net operating income. And how that's calculated is you take the gross annual income, which is normally made up of mostly rent. It could include things like a laundry mat or things of that nature, but most of the income is gonna come from the rents. Subtracting the expenses from the property over the course of a year. That would give your net operating income. Once you have the net operating income and you have a price, you can determine a cap rate, a capitalization, which is, which is short for capitalization rate. So you take the NOI and divide it by the actual price, which will give you the capitalization rate. Once we get the capitalization rate, now we can determine how attractive of a deal this is based on the price and the income that it's producing. So this is the information that you'll actually need in order to analyze an actual apartment deal. Now it's a little more detailed than that, but for the most part, that's all you need. Just understanding just really quick on cap rates, depending on the market will determine if you have a smoking deal or if someone's trying to sell it at full price or even overpriced. The way you can look at capitalization rate or cap rate is basically just like if you had money in a bank and what would the interest be on your money on a yearly basis. So. Keeping that in mind, anytime you get a cap rate over 10%, depending on the market, is normally going to be something that you will want to take a look at. Now, a lot of cap rates below 10% are going to be closer to retail, but it's still going to depend on where, where the apartment or the multifamily property is located. If it's in Southern California or New York City, then a, a 4 or 5% cap rate will be full price. If you get to eight or nine percent cap rate, then depending on what type of property is, oh, now I need to go over this. You're going to have different types of properties. You're going to have A, B, C, and D. An A property would be the more exclusive part of your mark of that particular market. The D types of properties will normally be the properties that you see on the news every night. Okay, and so C and B, you can figure it out. So the cap rate will be related to those types of properties. Obviously, it, it should just probably make simple sense to you that properties that are D as in dog type properties, the cap rates are normally going to be, the average cap rates are normally going to be higher. Whereas in the A, A type properties, the cap rates are going to be lower. And when I say lower, I mean like five, six, seven percent and they're going to be at retail because normally they can move those properties at full price versus when you're in the D type market, D is in dog, you have to sometimes get rid of those properties at 10, 11, 12, 15% cap rates because of it's a little bit more difficult to manage those properties historically. So with all that being said, you need to take that information. You can dive into deal later, find your deal, come back to this video, revert back to it, and start analyzing properties and reaching out to owners. And again, uh, if you're gonna deal with me directly, the properties need to be off market. And my definition of off market means if I Google the address, it does not come up for sale anywhere online. So, and you need to be dealing directly with the owner. None of this, 
well, I know this guy, he has another contract. I'm not going to be interested. You can deal with it, but I'm not going to be interested. If you're not dealing with the owner directly and or the owner's broker, I'm not going to be interested. I'm not going, I'm just not. Again, you can do whatever you want to. If, if you're not dealing directly with them when you contact me, I'm not going to be. And I don't want to get on the phone with an owner in a conference call and all that stuff. I'm giving you the information. You can take it and run with it however you want. I'm just telling you how I want to deal with it if you want to deal directly with me. And we both get paid. We split it 50-50. So, again, hopefully this additional training helps. Thanks, and I will see you on the flip side.